Hey everyone, it's your girl Maddie here, aka Beaver Mosh. And today I am joined by Ben of Venomous Echoes. Ben, thank you so much for joining me. How are we doing today? I'm pretty, doing pretty good here. Nice to be on here. And I've been watching your channel for a little while. So oh, thanks for having me on. I appreciate that quite a bit. Um, You just put out a, well, not just put out, but a couple months ago, put out a record, Split Formations and Infinite Mania off of I, Floyd Hanger record. Uh, I urge everyone watching to go check that out. But with that, I wanted to kind of start asking you about your label because uh, it's a label I Void Hanger that I'm a fan of. It puts out some incredibly interesting and unique music within the metal scene. And I'm wondering, how did you get involved with I Void Hanger? What has that experience been like so far? Well, um, so I recorded um, my last record, uh, Riding Tomb Amongst the Stars, last year. And it got a little buzz. So, uh, you know, I put out a CD with uh, Varg Heist Rest Records uh, last year. Yeah. Uh, so that kid, that did pretty good. And, you know, um, me and Justin uh, been pretty good friends. And, you know, he was like, you know, I think this would uh, be something that, you know, Void Hanger, I think, would really be interested in. So, um, you know, I took a chance and I just submitted my next record which i recorded directly right after that one um and uh luciano uh he got back to me i would say maybe about five days later yeah. um and you know he was like well you know it's a it's a tight schedule next year you know i don't know what it's going to look like you know but i'll listen to the record and yeah you know, i'll get back to you and let me let you know what my impressions are so i'd say maybe uh maybe a week to two weeks later he got back to me and he's like i can't stop listening to this record and i was like really that's amazing yeah he's like i i you know i've listened to it like seven times already now and when i wake up i put it on when i turn it off i'm still thinking about it so you know he's like i want to put this out i was like really <laughs> I was like, you know, because I I wasn't expecting anything like that. I wasn't even expecting like an answer, uh, yeah. to be honest. Um, you know, I just made this music in this room, so it's like <laughs> to to say that you know one of uh, my favorite labels wants to work with me was uh, was pretty awesome. Uh, so that's how that relationship kind of started. So I, you know, we we started talking deals and. Um, he said, you know, I want to put the newest record out on vinyl yeah. and, uh, you know, I also want to do a CD run of it and everything. And we, we've gone from there and, you know, we've, uh, we've continued, uh, you know, some other things are coming in the future too. So I'm, I'm really happy, happy being on this label. Yeah. Um, and I'm surprised cause I, I, I'm very familiar with Vark guys. So that's a great label, great people. Yeah, Varkas, though, seems to be very much a death metal, like straight death yeah. metal, straight grindcore, which your music is, is not. And um, so I do I do understand how they maybe thought that Void Hager was a better fit. How would, and I guess in your own words, how would you even describe the Void Hanger roster for people that are watching that are not familiar? What kind of, what is this, this typical sound that that label kind of puts out? Yeah, to me, um, I've, I've been a fan of the label uh, for quite a while and, you know, they put out some of the, the more experimental stuff yeah. for sure. Um, you know, I, I've, I'm a huge fan of Evangelist uh, when they put those records out back in the day. And, you know, uh, even last year, last year they had an amazing, amazing lineup of releases. Uh, you know, the vertebrae Atlantis, uh i reviewed that one yeah that's such a good record yeah and uh of course uh flesh vessel um uh, you know and flesh oh, yeah. vessel really impressed me last year um i had just found out about them last year too and uh, when i listened to that record they put out last year i was just like what in the fuck because <laughs> yeah. you know i'm a huge like 70s prog nerd of so course. it's like when i heard this record i was like oh my gosh, this is itching like 
all the scratches that I want. So I, you know, I, I bought that record immediately. I had to get it. And, uh, uh, you know, I talked with, uh, Alexander, uh, in that band as well. And, you know, we've been kind of chatting back and forth too. And I sent him a copy of, uh, my first album and, you know, it's just, it's just amazing to be a part of, uh, such a legendary, in my opinion, legendary roster. Um, so. Uh, yeah, I mean, they're a label that I, it's one of those labels that when I see that there is, I, I, every week there is a laundry list of releases that I have to get to. And like when I'm trying to prioritize uh, what I want to listen to, when I see that something came out on Vi Void Hanger, I always know, well, I don't know if it's going to be my taste, but I know it's going to be interesting. It's not going to sound like everything else is <laughs> coming out this week. So I go and I listen to it. Um, a causal intrusions on that label, you know, bands like that. Yeah. Are just like so out of the box and out of the box. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, like uh, you know, that's definitely what I think about when you know I think of I Void Hanger is just like these are bands that are kind of pushing boundaries and you know in all the good ways too. So that's why I've been a fan of it so for so long. One of my favorite records from last year that made my top fifty was a record by a band called At the Altar of the Horn God. And it's like the most interesting take on black metal I think I heard last year. It's like very it's black metal, a very ritualistic, like a lot of chanty stuff. It's like not something that you typically hear. And I'm like, wow, this is a very interesting record. And of course, it's being put on this label because it's not nothing. Again, like I love like the 20 bucks spins and the prosthetics and those labels are fantastic. But this is not a record that would go on in these labels. It's going to be for like one of these more avant garde focused labels like I, I Void Hanger. Right. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And um, that's what kind of drew me to wanting to submit my album to that that label because yeah. uh you know a lot of people were telling me like Dude, you should you should really try to you know take a chance and just submit that to void hanger because i think you know luciana would dig it and i'm like yeah. i don't know man i'm just nobody yeah. i don't know if he would even like even answer me so yeah. it was uh it was really cool, <laughs> cool. well I, I kind of poured over like your song titles and your lyrics, and it seems that you deal topically with like the body kind of changing or mutating, or like this discomfort with like the self or embodiment. And I'm wondering what draws you to these topics. Is there a, a theme or a message you are presenting by exploring these type of visual kind of phenomena? Um. Yeah, it's uh mainly just what I go through every day. Um, you know, uh being kind of uh kind of overweight and uh being obese to the point where it's physically painful every day. Uh -huh. Um, you know, and that's where that's where kind of all of the lyrics came from is like my point of view, I am the so called creation, um, as I put it. Yeah. And the outer beings that are kind of like doing all these things to me are kind of like the outliers of like depression, anxiety, body dysmorphia, all of these things that like go through, like talk to you, you know, that little voice in your head that tells yeah. you like, you are not good enough. Like you are, you're, you're shit basically. Yeah. And I've kind of like put all of that into this fantastical kind of cosmic horror story yeah i i think that's like one of the the cool things about our genre right like whether it be black metal or death metal, you could take these very personal things but write them in a way that's metal whether it be like talking about body horror within death metal or like going into black metal and talking about like your your empire falling or things like that you can make these images that fit really well with the sound but make them be about like very real things yeah and you know um this was uh, one project because i've done many different things but this was one project that i've decided to take uh very personal and go with a very personal route and uh deal with things that you know basically i've tucked away for many years yeah. 
Um, and I just decided to let it all out and, um, you know, the, the shrieks and the screams and sometimes even the cries on the record are just kind of me just going through it. Yeah. And, and like audibly, like getting that across, like it, it, it probably, I don't know how you would do it as affecting, you know, like kind of getting into a, like a, like this character, like how could you do that and say like, I don't know a country a country song nothing against that but like it's just like it's not it's 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 not the vessel for like communicating no. that no it's yeah. not and i think like uh this kind of death metal is yeah. the perfect uh way to kind of represent that kind of thing yeah well you seem to be a pretty busy person because I look on on metal archives and you have a couple other projects that have also put out records or demos or releases even this year a couple of examples including void blight and ceremonic buryment how how do you like maintain or like balance your time between various creative outputs like this well whenever I have downtime you know yeah. I'm I'm just in here and I'm just messing around with different ideas messing around with different genres messing with uh guitar tones uh, like if i come up with a guitar tone that sounds like maybe hey this could be good for this band or this could be good for this band and blah 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 you know i spend hours up here sometimes on my days off um you know at least trying to complete a song a day and yeah. with uh venomous echoes the the writhing tomb uh amongst the stars record i did in one session wow and I really wanted it to be in one session because I wanted it to be kind of like just pouring everything out of me and just like putting every, like every bit of myself into it and just being exact, just 100% just zacked out by the end of it. Sure. And yeah, I think that record is like kind of a, a good representation of just <laughs> being completely overwhelmed by sound yeah. i mean you also so this is you know it's kind of a i mean would you call it like black and death metal what you do at least for this project i would say so yeah, yeah. i would say so because there's different tinges of different things yeah um because i love so much different music like um especially like on uh the new record with split formations. Um, there are some jazzy parts. There are some, you know, in my opinion, some tinges of like some, the Mars Volta kind of guitar playing and, and sure. some, I pull, you know, from like noise and everything. I, I want it to be just uh, a hodgepodge of, of different genres, but I want it to lean on that uh, kind of, uh, black and death metal kind of feel yeah and the reason i i ask that is um because some of your other projects like like you have a couple like funeral doom projects and i'm wondering you know what what is like i know the the, the sonic difference between a funeral doom and black and death metal it's pretty obvious but i guess maybe the emotional difference in like how you go approach those two different styles of extreme metal well with uh funeral doom you know i think a lot of people just uh, equate that to sadness yeah um and you know it's definitely if i'm having like a, a down day you know i'll come in here and i'll i'll write either a ceremonic barament song which is more on the melodic side for me um and i have also a, a thing that i do called wallow which is more like kind of like a conate kind of like like an ode conate a little bit yeah um you know and there's just um whatever i'm feeling that day i think you know hey i gotta put this down so i'll go up i'll go up to here in this room and i'll put it down and with venomous echoes it's a you know like kind of like recently you know if i i've gone through like a long depressive episode for like a couple of months or uh you know being manic uh and with anxiety and everything that's where that comes out sure yeah no i mean that makes sense and i I think that just like illustrates how metal 
is a very broad genre that I don't think people really realize just how much how varied and flexible it, it can be in terms of different types of output and different types of right messages and ideas and feelings that can come out of it and like a lot of people don't uh equate metal to being emotional mm. um but you know for me uh you know with like black metal and funeral doom and death metal there's a lot of emotion to that and i think i put all of my emotions into my projects yeah yeah no um i uh I was at Maryland Death Fest uh, about a week and a half ago, and sweet, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I saw I saw Spectral Wound, um, one of my favorite bands of all time. But um, hearing like the way the vocal, seeing the vocal is just like contort Jonah the way he contorts his body and makes these impassioned cries over these like bold but also kind of triumphant but also sorrowful melodies and these violent drums like there's so much you can take from that emotionally depending on how what angle you're going into there's just so much to feel there it's meant to make you feel something and I'm like people who like don't understand metal like probably don't don't get into it that deeply and like look at the nuances and see wow so much is being expressed here yeah, and I think with uh, Venomous Echoes, I'm trying to be more blatant with it. Yeah. Um, you know, I'm trying to make my emotions more apparent as far as just being a straightforward, like, death metal vocal performance. I want people to understand, like, hey, this is this is something that's, uh, you know, this this guy's really going through it, you know, like like this guy is really having like uh uh either a manic episode or something, yeah. you know, which you know I, happens a lot and especially recently, um, you know, I've had a lot of issues, but you know, um, uh, with with my future release, which I won't talk much about, but you know, it's probably the most vulnerable I've been on a record, but sure, um. You, <laughs> this seems like a, a project, you, you know, I, I won't make you go into details of a future release, but uh, you're, this is your, if I'm, if I'm not mistaken, this is your sophomore full weight under the Venomous Echo tag. And I don't, your first album, I think was in 2023. Like you're just like kind of pumping them out there. Yeah. Um, you know, because I'm always writing and right, I'm, yeah. um, I'm constantly um you know trying to uh put things together um but with venomous echoes it's very intentional um because kind of what i'm doing is i'm trying to create this world almost sure um not exactly like trying to like go as in depth like you know say coheed and cambria would do or like a saga or something like that yeah. but it's uh it's definitely a giant concept um yeah but it all reflects just like my personal life and what's going on yeah well kind of switching gears here i uh i know you're in ohio i'm in minnesota we're fellow midwesterners here um yeah Noel. <laughs> you know uh <laughs> we're kind of the flyover part of the the country as people think for the, of the states and you know a lot of bands they might book an east coast tour or they might book a west coast tour but we're kind of like option you know if they come yeah. to the midwest they'll they'll come to chicago and i'm like what is your opinion on the state of metal within the central part of the country the midwest of the boring part like and is it harder to get your music out and say Kettering Ohio to like a broader audience than it is if you were in like New York or San Francisco where there's like more eyes on. Well, I'm sure it is, but yeah. um, you know, when I was younger, like 15, like Ohio had an amazing like you know grind and punk scene. Sure. Um, you know, I I grew up in that. You know, I grew up seeing like punk or grind bands like every single weekend or you know sometimes on a weekday. Uh, going off to either Lima, Ohio, which is about an hour and a half north from me, or going down here to Dayton, which uh, I live in a suburb of. Yeah. Um, and you know, Dayton had like a really thriving grindcore scene 
Um, but after the pandemic, everything just kind of dried up. Sure. And uh, I think, you know, there's some really great bands that are still doing it, um, you know, especially out of Cincinnati, like Baldrin. Um, Baldrin are kicking ass. Love those guys. I, I saw them when, like, they were really young. Um, but uh, we also have, like, uh, Opium Doom uh, Opium Doom Cult. And, you know, they do some, like, uh, Funeral Doom-ish kind of psychedelic stuff. Yeah. Um, but, you know, there's not a lot happening right now. And it's kind of bummer. But, you know, it is what it is. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> For Ohio, it's kind of like, eh. Yeah. But, you know, Minnesota and, uh, you know, I I know had, has an awesome scene. Or at least had an awesome scene. I haven't been out there in many years. Um, but, you know, I knew everybody from, like, the Rat Hole. I don't know if you heard of them. Mm. But... Uh, you know, the scafe guys, um, fucking agitate. I knew them yeah. pretty well. Yeah, it was just, it was a time, and I'm like 36 now, so it's like it was forever ago. <laughs> yeah. Um, no, I, I think, in my opinion, like it is like this isn't the sexy part of the country by far, but I, I think. I think with with that, I think some of the bands here, either it's out of boredom or there's a chip on their shoulder. But I mean, bands in the Midwest do go hard and there they are do. so many good bands in. in also, you know, another one that I'm really good friends with is uh, Deteriorate. Yeah. Um, I know them. I know Jim really well. Um, we've been friends for years and but I haven't seen him in so long. Yeah. But, you know, Deteriorate is really active. Um, you know, they're still going hard for sure. Um, and the fan base in, 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 at least I know in, in the Twin Cities, I'm sure it's in Ohio, like you see, you know, it's when a band does come, you know, um, people go out and they, they, they go to the show and they're, they're excited to be there. And you see, like, you know, the scene because it's, you know, there's not that many metal heads in this smaller part of the country, but they're there, you know, right. Two mold has come into, St. Paul in a couple in next month. And I'm sure it's going to be a packed room because, you know, we don't get as many metal shows as say, you know, New York with St. Vitus bar or like LA. Right. I remember, uh, when I was a kid, uh, there was a show that happened at like some church and (laughs) it was, it was, (laughs) you could tell that like, I don't know how this show got booked, but it was Magruder grind. And, uh, it was some, uh, like crust punk band i can't remember their name it was forever ago but gruder grind at a church is a concept <laughs> <laughs> well you know we were there just for them and like we were, we were like all these other bands were like kind of like uh local like indie rock bands and it was just kind of like whatever but you know then like as soon as we because it was like in a basement sort of and as yeah. soon as the door would open from the top of the stairs and we smelt the stench of just bo and that wonderful crust punk smell we were like oh yeah. they're here <laughs> oh yeah that's how that's how clean this show was <laughs> but yeah i i i i think it's always hilarious um when the metal or the, the power violence or the grindcore scene just finds its way to places it probably shouldn't be and it's just like <laughs> well i don't know it's like a greeter guy going to a church um, yeah, it... another maryland death fest story for you this is just kind of fresh in my memory that kind of plays with this i uh i got there the day before the fest and i was looking for things to do so i went to the, to the fucking aquarium like look at some fish um and there were a few other people going to the fest that had the same idea. So I saw a handful of people in like their black metal shirts. And then there was a field trip. So it was like the, literally the aquarium that day was a bunch of kids on a field trip and metal had it. It just did not work. And it was, but it was hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Well, um, I can tell you're a fan of some of the more dissonant death metal. You know, I think of stands like, you know, portal or maybe ulcerate or like mitochondrion and i think 
your label is a good place to hold bands like that. It seems to be their fit. But I'm wondering, why do you think there is an interest so far? It seems like it's rising in more atonal or, or noisy or kind of, I don't know, oblong takes on death metal and other forms of heavy music. Well, I mean, the only thing that I can really say is when I first heard Portal years ago, yeah, uh, you know, it revitalized death metal for me. Like, Damn. it just it just like i was like oh my gosh i was like this is how death metal should sound i was like it should you know not be pleasing to the ear um the riffs should make absolutely no sense but they're swirling and just cavernous and evil you know and that that just brought brings the evil yeah. back to death metal and i was you know and i think that's where the interest kind of lies now um you know people want that mer more murky kind of sound, um, you know, with bands like Antediluvian. And um, uh, I just recently heard uh, Aberition, and I'm like, oh, oh yeah, holy Aberish. fuck. Aberish like, is in Minneapolis. That's a mini that's a local band. Yeah. Here. I was like, fuck, man. I yeah. was like, this is so good. <laughs> Cause I, I love that kind of just like nasty, just in your face, just kind of. This the riffs almost don't make sense, but they make sense. But then you know yeah. things just fall apart, you know. And I don't know. It, it's just something that's on the rise, and I'm really happy to see that because, um, you know, I think Portal didn't get all of the appreciation that they needed, but of course, you know, they still they still are huge in my mind. But yeah, it's coming. It's coming up, and I'm really excited. Look, like I was listening to Bolt Thrower last night. I will, if Obituary comes to town, I'm going to see. Like I, like I love. Right. I have nothing against like that classic old school death metal sound. It's great, and it was for the time. It was, you know, it it was a game changer. But it's not shocking to me anymore, right? But so what? I need to hear something like a Portal or a Mitochondria just to be like that. Whoa, this is suffocating this is scary this is horrifying i can't get that anymore from like a morbid angel record i need right. a little more complex and visceral right because like when i first listened to a portal record i felt like you know like this is almost like choking you oh, like yeah. this is like this is like wanting to drown you in sound and yeah it it, it changed everything on my aspect of what death metal could sound like yeah and also like i think i, I maybe like would you know the, the dissident death metal sound but also there's the like the war metal sound you know like your bands like you know like your arch goats or bands like that that are like this more just straightforward militant violent take on like death metal and black right metal, like takes it to a new level of extremity that but I even yeah but even with that it's still borderlines like pure noise right like and that's I, I I love that genre as well. I you know, I was a noise art noise artist for like fifteen years, yeah. and when you branch out and you find different things, um, you know, you put it in your pocket, and you, I think that's kind of what I'm doing now with Venomous Echoes is I'm taking all of this stuff that I love about different genres yeah. of extreme music, and just smashing it all together and seeing what happens <laughs> hell yeah sometimes the best music comes is just like throwing shit at the wall and seeing what sticks right and yeah um well you say you spend a lot of your free time you know your days off making music making these projects but i'm curious with any of your free time is any of it spent outside of music is there anything else you know you like to spend your time with i know you know some of your projects are very literature inspired you know what 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 else is kind of like what are your hobbies what 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 is ben you know outside of venomous echoes yeah i love to paint um oh yeah uh, uh i've recently gotten into that you know um been doing that for maybe five or six months now so i've been really enjoying that that really helps like calm my head when oh, yeah. i do that um video games fucking love video games i actually have a, a gaming channel that it has nobody subscribed to it but you know i do it every now and then 
but um tell me what it is i will subscribe right after this <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's called resident grim yeah oh, yeah uh i just uh streamed the first part of hellblade 2 which okay. is sick yeah um but uh also horror movies i'm a huge horror movie buff uh you know anything and everything horror i've I've just like I can store it in my head and I can pick yeah. it out at like a dinner conversation. <laughs> so, um, well, I love when bands say they play games, but it's my other main interest. So, I gotta ask you, what are you playing right now? Uh, well, right now I'm playing uh, Hellblade Two, so yeah. I'm I'm on that game right now. I think uh I really want to play uh, Alan Wake Two because i fucking love the first one yeah. first one was so good um i did uh diablo 4 for like six months <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> so that one took forever and uh i did elden ring 2 that one took forever too oh i'm sure <laughs> yeah I, with elden ring i was a glutton for punishment but yeah yeah no um I when I'm not doing this channel, I, I'm typically gaming. Um, right now, other than my typical uh old school RuneScape binge that I'm always on, um, I right now I'm trying to beat Hollow Knight. I haven't played it before, and it's a it's a very difficult game. Um, I actually just beat one of the latter bosses in the game that took me like three nights of grinding it's and i finally figured out the strat and got it down but like yeah i've heard of it but i haven't played it yeah um, so it's a it's like a it's like a it's like a indie platformer game that has yeah. like some soul like characteristics to it. it's a very interesting genre mix yeah i i enjoy the 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 souls like games a lot but they're frustrating as hell yeah and it it's just like the fact that they make it like almost and I say that like with every like I don't know how to say it, but just like I say that with like every fiber of my being, almost impossible <laughs> to beat. But yeah, when you it just gives you that like feeling when you do beat it, it's like fuck yes, it's like a fucking <laughs> beater, it's like I fucking whip that dude's ass. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, I uh. I've never played the Red Dead Redemption games, but I I now own it it's on my Steam library, and so I think I after, never played that either. I, well, I think after I I beat uh, Hollow Knight, maybe one of the game, a quick game, I think I'm gonna try to jump into it. I just it's always like it's always you know like hmm, am is it am I ready to commit to this like you know 100 hour RPG yet? Is it time? Right. Like, I think I think I. It's been a war. It's been there's been some space since I beat Baldur's Gate where I think I can jump into another game like this. So, yeah, um, I'm not like, uh, you know, most like most gamers where I, like I play constantly because I don't yeah. get a lot of time. But when I do, I definitely enjoy it. <laughs> yeah. Um, I see you drinking Powerade, Powerade Zero right now. And that's interesting because I was going to ask you, um, what is your drink of choice? And it can't be an alcoholic beverage. It just has. What is your drink of choice? Well, you know, right now, um, Crystal Light. I love Crystal Light. <laughs> Hell yeah! Uh, I actually that's what's in here right now is Crystal Light, the strawberry. Um, I drink that shit constantly. Um, because I just hate drinking straight water. I don't know yeah. why, and I'm trying to like cut off soda, uh, because you know I'm on this like diet to have my surgery done with the bariatric and everything. So it's like they tell you no sodas, no sodas at all because it's got yeah. it's got the carbonation and it's got sodium and blah 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 blah. So it's like that's a hard one to kick for me because I fucking love Mountain Dew. <laughs> like, God, man, that is that is a vice of mine. But, you know, I'm trying to be good, <laughs> trying to be a good boy for the doctor. Yeah. Um, but, uh, yeah, I don't drink uh, alcohol really anymore. I, uh, I stopped like maybe 10 years ago. Uh, so I, I haven't haven't touched a drop since then, really. really? 
Um, you know, I'll have a, I'll have a beer like occasionally, but I don't get fucked up anymore. Like I used to. <laughs> so, so crystal light or, you know, power aid, uh, I also like those, uh, fucking, what are they called? Uh, uh, sparkling ice, like sparkling water drinks. Oh, those sure. are really good. Like, like the LaCroix or something else or no, it's not like those, uh, they're more flavored, I think. <laughs> Cause I don't really care for seltzers that much. Um, I can't really, can't really explain. It's like a flavored, like sparkling water though. Kind of like those ones that you get at the dollar store with the, like the black cherry and. Oh, uh, sure. They got yeah. a taller bottle kind of. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, hot take. Maybe I'll lose subscribers for this. I don't know, but I don't understand Lacroix at all. Like, what? 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 what I, I, I don't. I don't me. fucking either. Like, <laughs> I seriously, I had a friend of mine tell me to buy the lemon one because he said it was so good, and I bought it, and I was like, dude, this tastes like garbage. And I was like, it. It tastes like if water had soap in it. That that's how I I I take it anyway, and yeah, I just. Well... I, I just can't do it and it's like yeah you know, uh people love those like hard seltzers and stuff like that i'm like this shit is retarded i was like i, I can't i can't drink this stuff it tastes like soap to me with alcohol yeah. in it <laughs> i um i i, I will cry like it that there's not enough flavor I, I wish it would either just be straight water or have some, have some flavor but it's like, like it's like this like hint of like 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 a like a drop of like a suggestion of lime and like this is right this is bullshit like i just give you either a lime flavored water or water like don't don't try to trick me don't try right. to play this teething game with there's me. literally no flavor to those if yeah. somebody says that there is they're lying <laughs> yeah. i'm just saying <laughs> um I drink a lot of Diet Coke. I don't. I. I. I Me I, I too. Just Diet Coke. <laughs> Me too, man. And uh, I'm just like, I love Diet Coke. I love Mountain Dew. Like those are like my two favorite sodas, and yeah. I have to stop them completely. And it's like, <laughs> ah. <laughs> so it's not the sugar. You can't even drink Diet Coke. It's just like the carbonation. No, it's the carbonation. It's the sodium. You know, it mm. turns the sodium turns to sugar and blah blah blah. So it's like. Uh, stop being stop being all scientific on me. I just want to coke. <laughs> but you know, ruining the fun again. Right, exact. But yeah. you know, when you're you're breaching almost five hundred pounds, you know you got to listen. Yeah. So, <laughs> well, um, all right, I got one last question for you. But sure, you are set. You have the power to put together your dream metal fest, and you can book any five bands you want. Who's playing this thing? That's a hard one. Yeah. <laughs> That's a hard question. You know, I just recently uh, just heard the new Judas Priest album. It's <laughs> so good. And I, I was blown away. Yeah. So I would definitely, you know, I would love to see them at least just once in my life. Um, uh, and it has to be metal, like just strictly metal. Yeah, it's a metal fest. Yeah, okay. <laughs> because because I would love to see Tom Waits just once in my life. Yeah, before that's, he I was dies. Say, if you like if you like dropped like a power violence fan, I mean like, I've made they let it but a pass <laughs> People outside the realm of this question. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> so yeah, I would love to see Judas Priest. Um, yeah. you know, it too bad Ozzy's not allowed to, you know, yeah, Ozzy's not doing good anymore. I would love to see an old school Sabbath set. Um, they could, uh, they could I would love to see Portal just once. Oh, yeah. Just once. Uh, and, uh, you know, I had the chance to see them like forever ago and I didn't have the money and I was really angry about that. But, um, so that's three. Gosh. So we have, we, you know, see, we have Portal, we have Judas Priest. Do we and, have uh, and, uh, gosh, man, this is a hard, this is a hard question. <laughs> yeah. And Sabbath. I would love to see, uh, like, oh, an old right, 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 right. An old school Sabbath set. Um, 
So that's three. I would love to see uh, Bell Witch um, just just once uh, because you know I'm a bass player and seeing Dylan just play the bass that he the way that he does is just mesmerizing. Um, and then I think my last one. Uh, I'd say for the last one, I would go with just for some fun. Why not I'd go with uh, Ghoul? I'd like to see Ghoul. That'd be fun. This is, this is a this is a this is a very um for five band. This is a very eccentric lineup. You got everything from Judas Priest to dissonant death metal portal <laughs> to funeral doom to just, just Ghoul. Like, this is great. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, you know, man, I just love I love so much different types of music. Yeah. Um but yeah. Definitely. That would that would be that would be a solid lineup for me. Hell I think. yeah. Hell yeah. Well, then of uh, Venomous Echoes, uh as I do with every interview before I let you go, I want to give you the floor to be able to like tell people where they could find your music if there's there's merch where they can hear you all the socials all the good stuff give your plug give your last thoughts go yeah um so you can find uh my new record split formations and then for infinite mania at uh i void hanger band camp uh you can also uh find me on youtube my band has a youtube so you can subscribe to that uh, definitely make sure you do that. And I'm also on Facebook. I'm on Twitter. Uh, I'm on, uh, I'm even on TikTok, and I don't know how to use it, but you know, if anybody knows how, please send me a message. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, but yeah, you know, um, if you search me, you know, you should be able to find me. Um, even if you want to look up my personal Facebook, hit me up. You know, I'm always looking, to, you know, to hit up, you know, talk to people, um, connect. You know, that's what I make this music for anyway, is to connect with people. And, and definitely thank you so much uh, for having me on this show. Yeah. Um, you know, I'm a fan of it. I definitely love your inter your interviews and your reviews. Thank you. You you kill it uh definitely for sure um but yeah also check out my other band ceremonic bearment uh it's a lesser known band but you know it's definitely worth it um also have a, a solo project that's a doom project called wallow you can find that on Bandcamp too oh yeah well um once again um thank you to ben of venomous echoes Check out the record Split Formations and Infinite Mania off of I Void Hanger Records. As always, thank you to my patrons. There, your, there's your names right, right up there. And uh, my name is Maddie, aka Beavermosh, and I'm signing off. <laughs>